Welcome to Never Again Is Now, a podcast about anti-Semitism. I am Evelyn Marcus, and in addition to being a psychologist, I'm featured in the documentary about anti-Semitism, Never Again Is Now. I am a Dutch Jew and the daughter of Holocaust survivors. In 2006, I emigrated to the United States because of the rising anti-Semitism in Europe. I am Phyllis Simpler Miller, the founder of the free nonfiction Holocaust theater project, Thin Edge of the Wedge. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest where I was the only Jewish student in all my public school classes. And a community of, of people whose grandparents and parents had come at the turn of the previous century to flee the czar. Yet in 1970, only 25 years after the end of World War II, my US Army officer husband and I found ourselves stationed in Munich, Germany. And this experience changed our lives forever. In this episode, we will discuss anti-Semitism in France, the country with the largest Jewish community outside Israel and the United States. France is a country where anti-Semitism often takes a physical and violent form. In the past two decades, 11 Jews were, have been killed in anti-Semitic attacks in France. We especially remember Sarah Halimi, a 65-year-old woman pushed out of her window in 2017 by her Muslim neighbor who shouted, Allahu Akbar, I killed Satan. And Mireille Noll, an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor, stabbed to death and set on fire by a French Muslim in 2018. Here with us today to discuss anti-Semitism in France is Robert Egenes. Robert Egenes is the executive director of CRIF, the umbrella organization of French Jewish institutions. He lives in a suburb of Paris, where he's the president of the Jewish congregation there. And he's also the president of the Jewish religious Zionist youth organization, Bnei Akiva, France. In addition, Robert, Robert Egenes is a business consultant who holds an MBA from Northwestern University in the United States. He and his wife, Geneviève, have, a, have eight children, most of them living in Israel. Robert, welcome and thank you for coming to our show. Thank you very much for welcoming me. I get to ask the first question. Putting aside your professional role in combating anti-Semitism, what in your family history motivates you to work against anti-Semitism in France? Okay, I was born in France and uh, of parents. Uh, my mother was born in, in Paris too, uh, from uh, Romanian parents. And my father came from Poland. They have, uh, they are uh, survivors of the Shoah. My grandparents, my mother's parents uh, were arrested by French police and sent to camps. And my grandmother uh, died in Auschwitz. My grandfather returned. Um, so there is uh, a sensitivity to anti-Semitism, to Shoah and, and these subjects. This is very strong in my family and for me. So this is first. Second, I believe very strongly, like Irving Kotler, that anti-Semitism starts with the Jews, but never ends up with the Jews. And that anti-Semitism is really the cancer of a society. And the reason for fighting anti-Semitism is not for the Jews. It's really for the societies we live in. I wholeheartedly, and I'm sure Evelyn does to agree with what you just said. It's, you do, definitely, yes. So we're gonna just clarify, ask one extra little extra question to clarify. Where does anti-Semitism in France come from? The majority of anti-Semitism in France. Okay. We have several forms of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in France has not always been the same type. Let's talk about today's anti-Semitism. Yeah. Um, we basically find three to four origins of anti-Semites. One is the extreme right carrying the very old ideas of anti-Semitism, the hate of the Jews, 
the belief that the Jews have done uh, many, many things against the country, against the world, um, and prejudices basically against the Jews. That is number one. Number two is uh, the anti-Semitism from the extreme left. Uh, the anti-Semitism from the extreme left is basically based on the hate of Israel, the consideration that Israel is a colonial uh, entity, a European colonial entity within the Middle East and should not exist. And whoever uh, questions the very existence of Israel is by nature anti-Semite. And the third, we were talking about the prejudices from the extreme right, but there is also unfortunately a prejudices from the Muslim population. In, you just mentioned that the uh, France was the country with the largest Jewish population in Europe, but we also have the largest Muslim population. And since a lot of these Muslim people uh, originated from Arab countries, they carry with them uh, a lot of prejudices against Jews. Let me make it clear that we are not against Muslims and the vast majority of Muslim people are learning the values of our societies and we live very well with them and we live with the leadership, the Muslim leadership very well and, and we, we build together the society of tomorrow. But uh, the Islamists, the radical Islam are people we can't live with and, and they have a lot of difficulty living with us. And therefore, they are our enemies, and they're really, this is the anti Semitism that kills. You just mentioned it's not 11, it's 12 people that were uh, killed in France since 2003 for the very and only reason they were Jewish. Thank you. About half a million Jews live in France. Um, in a recent survey by the American Jewish Committee, about 75% of French Jews say they have been victims of anti-Semitic acts during their lives and that anti-Semitism has been rising in the past 10 years. In the same survey, 20% of Jews in France said they have experienced physical anti-Semitism and that they're in a form of violence and that their children have been physically attacked, some with knives. We know that this physical violence against Jews in France comes from the French Muslim population, which is 10 times larger than the French Jewish population and has almost double the proportion of anti-Semites compared to the non-Muslim French population. Do you believe that Jews in France can ever be safe again? Um, let me comment these, these numbers. First of all, there are two things. One is insecurity. The second is the, the feeling of insecurity. There are some regions, some areas that we call, and we've been calling them for the past 20 years, uh, les valeurs, les, les zones perdues de la République, the, the lost zones for the Republic. Mm. And, um, and, and these areas where few Jews still live, uh, they are really in danger. And they really have a very hard time living as Jews in these neighborhoods. Now, the reason they live in these neighborhoods is that you, basically it's the less wealthy population, population that do not have the possibility to move to better neighborhoods, or elder people who have bought their apartments or houses, and because of the, um, the, the change of population, uh, they can't sell it to settle in another and more secure region. And, and, and this is really one of the big concerns because these are the people who live in insecurity on a daily basis. And uh, that's the day-to-day -day anti semitism So that is one that anti-Semitism we're very concerned with. Second, you were mentioning the study from a, um, AJC. There was also another study made last year that said that 90% of students in France 
have been victims of anti-Semitism, 90%, which is almost all students uh, studying in France have been victims of anti-Semitism. Big words or attitudes or violence, uh, this is something definitely where we are concerned. Now, there are still some neighborhoods which are safe and where you would see people with a kippah in the street, there was, where you would see a lot of kosher restaurants, because you have to understand, and this is very important for your audience to understand, even though France has a lot of anti-Semitism today, we have a very vivid and developing Jewish life. A lot of Jewish community centers, synagogues, cultural centers, schools, restaurants, uh, activities. So th there is a boom in, in Jewish activity in France, even though there is anti-Semitism. So yes, Jews can live in, in France, not everywhere, but um, we also have a big movement of population. We call it internal aliyah. People moving from less secure areas to more secure areas. And uh, so we, we're worried about the future of Jews in France, but we've been in this country 2,000 years and um, we're still preparing, we're still building, we're still opening new community centers, new synagogues uh, to prepare for the future of Judaism in France. Thank you. That's quite interesting. Could you just say one more sentence? Are we talking basically Paris or outside Paris? I just we're talking. We're talking all the big cities, basically, where Jews have settled. We there. There were times where Jews were all over yes. in, in small villages. When you read the period of Rashi, they right. were in very in all the small villages around the area. Now Jews are basically. Um, in the big cities, in seven of the, the, the biggest cities of France. And the same phenomenon would happen in every city. We saw, for example, we will have the, um, the uh, 10th anniversary of the uh, killing in Toulouse. And we've seen the community in Toulouse really being uh, totally devastated by, because of the, uh, of the war, of, of, of the fear of anti-Semitism and people have gone, a lot of people have moved to Israel, a lot of people have moved to Paris or other areas in France. Um, and this, what I described was in Paris, but it's also in every big town in Marseille, for example, where we have in Strasbourg, we have the same situation and the same uh, phenomenon. Thank you, that's what I wanted to know. And I remember the event in Toulouse, it was at a school, a Jewish school, is that right? Yes. That was, uh, that was one of the first uh, Islamic attacks in 2012. So that will be 10th anniversary in a few weeks, 19th of March, right. by the way. So, okay, my next question is, the Jewish Umbrella Organization that you work for was formed during the years of the Holocaust when Jewish resistance groups united in France. Can you tell us about the history of your organization during the Holocaust? Yes. The organization was created in 1943. For the first time, people from all, from the whole scope of Jewish population united to do three things. To represent the Jews, to fight anti-Semitism at the time, to fight the Germans, and to work for Israel. And these are basically the three missions of, of the organizations today. We fight anti-Semitism and we fight for the rights of man. And so we fight all types of hates. Um, we um, represent the Jews with the government, with the uh, civil society, with the um, administration, with the religions. And we have a lot of conversations. We're talking to everyone in the country. We had the big uh, dinner, Kriv uh, dinner last uh, week uh, that gathered a thousand people, including it, it, it was to be the president Macron, but it was prime minister because Macron was in Brussels working for, the, um, for Europe. 
and every just a lot of political uh, leadership was there, religious leadership, uh, union leadership, you name it, everybody was uh, around. So we are really talking to all these people. And what do we talk about? We talk about the, the anti-Semitism for the very reason I was mentioning before. We talk about anti-Semitism because anti-Semitism, we need them to understand that anti-Semitism in the society is really the cancer that could ruin uh, our model uh, of society. And uh, so the, the crib dinner is really an exchange of a long speech by the, by the president of CRI, Francis Khalifa, and the response by the president of the Republic, which was given this time by the prime minister. Um, so it's, it, it's like the state of the union of the Jewish situation in France. Very important, very uh, strong words from the president of Khif, making the uh, explaining basically why we're worried about the, what's happening in our society, uh, what's going well and what's not going well, what could go uh, much better. And the president responds. We had very strong words when he said, we, the, the, because the prime minister was reading the, the, yeah. the speech of the president and he said, I understand and I know that Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish people. Uh, when he said, nobody can say there is apartheid in Israel. So the, the position of the French presidency and the French government are very important. And this is what we work for. Now, the way we are organized is we are a federation of 73 uh, organizations representing people all over the scope. Uh, in terms of religiosity, we have the Chabad and we have the liberal and we have the Masorati and we have just, just the whole scope of, of, of uh, Jewish uh, religion expression. We also have the, the uh, youth organization, the students organization, the women organization, which always a, is a part of our uh, federation. Uh, we have the people depending on, on who, who have organizations depending where they were born, either in Eastern Europe or in, in Morocco or Algeria or Tunisia. And we have the Jewish doctors, the Jewish lawyers, the Jewish pharmacists. So every organization, every Jewish organization is just part of our, um, of our uh, federation. And we are totally democratic and we have a, a steering committee and an executive board and a president who is elected for three years he can be re-elected once, and, and this president, Francis Califa, is, is terminating now his second term. Um, and, uh, and, and basically, we meet on a weekly basis with the executive, on a monthly basis with the steering committee. And, and, and we are a, a center of conversation, discussion on what the options are and what we should uh, do to be more effective to represent the Jewish community, to help the government fight anti-Semitism and, and to fight all the hate, the hate against Muslims, the hate against uh, the racism, the hate uh, against women that we are seeing and all types of, uh, and the hate against the, uh, the country that we are uh, experiencing also. So we're really there um, as an organization that fights the hate uh, in the country and show the direction that uh, that is good and that and that is uh, dangerous for the, our society and our model of society. That leads right into the next question, which is what are the current main policies, both from the government and J Jewish organizations, against anti-Semitism in France, and what more do you think could be done than is being done now? Okay, this is typically what uh, the, the speech of the Kriv Dina would, would stand for. And basically we have, believe it or not, the best system in the legal system in the world to fight anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in our country is not an opinion, it's a crime. And you could be uh, fined and you could be punished. Uh, if the judges would really apply the law and we'll come back to it in a minute. We have laws for memorial um, events. We have laws against Shoah denial. We have laws against even boycott of a country. Uh, 
Uh, so people could be uh, attacked and punished for these type of behavior. All types of, when, when we look at the IHRA uh, definition of anti-Semitism, basically in this country, uh, every example would be condemned uh, in, according to French law. Now, the question is, is the law applied? And uh, we have a feeling, and we express the feeling that the, not justice, but the judges do not apply properly the, uh, the law for the people who are anti-Semites. And this is very important because if the laws were correctly applied, if the penalties were strong enough, it would probably deter the, the people to develop more anti-Semitic behaviors. And the way it is uh, done today uh, is a problem for, for us, for the Jews, but it's also a problem for the country because a country that does not fight anti-Semitism, and I repeat, is, is in danger for the model of society that it represents. And Very much. Wh wh why are the judges not applying the law as it should be in your, in your opinion? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. The, the, the fact is judges are people and people have ideas and they have their own ideas and they may not share the, the ideas that we defend that anti-Semitism is dangerous. Law says anti-Semitism is, uh, is a crime but they may think it's an opinion. And therefore they would not apply the law as strongly that it should be, or that we think it should be, uh, and, and rather consider it to an opinion. It's always a question of border. It's always a question of where do you define the, 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 the time when it becomes more, uh, more a crime and less a crime. So, um, and this is probably the reason judges try not to be too strong on anti-Semites. And, and, and we, think, uh, we think it's very important. We have a big role played also by the memorials, the memorial organizations that keep explaining the uh, genocides, not only the Jewish genocides, but all the genocides right. in order to teach people what may lead to a genocide and why it's dangerous and why prejudices and why words will, will conduct to uh, act. And uh, basically when, when, when you were mentioning the anti-Semitism felt by the Jewish community, it's very often words. And the, the, what we are condemning is the fact that words will soon become uh, more than words. It will become acts. And, and, and that is when it's dangerous. And that is what brought France to no 12 death uh, crimes because for people, for the only reason they were Jewish. And, and Robert, the, since there is a big Muslim population bringing a lot of, that brought a lot of anti-Semitism with them uh, from their backgrounds uh, in Arab countries and presumably also from their culture. Um, what, what is being done? What is tried to be done in France to reduce that amount of anti-Semitism? This is the work we're doing with the Muslim organizations. We're working a lot with, um, for example, the Great Mosque of Paris, which is one of the most important in, and, and, and many other mosques also, and imams in, and uh, rectors, whatever uh, you, you call them. People were in charge of the Muslim population. We even talked with the head of the uh, Islamic League in Saudi Arabia, asking him, to explain to the populations, to the Muslim population that anti-Semitism is not a good prejudice and, and that he should also defend the values of the societies we live in, in order for all people to live uh, well together. So a lot of education, we're talking to the Ministry of Education and to the, the people of the ministry a lot to make sure that the values of the society are well uh, taught in our system. <clears throat> we're talking with the Muslim organizations, 
to make sure that um, they carry on the, 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 the good ideas of living together and building together. There is also a big Muslim Brotherhood uh, representation in France. Are, are those also dialogue partners for you or not? More difficult. We've met with them a long time ago. Um, it's, uh, it's a different system. The, uh, the idea, and uh, this is a very small part of the Muslim population. Uh, but we need all together, but we need uh, to push on the values of our society. This is important and th it is important that it comes from the basis, not only from the from top to bottom, but also bottom to, to top. And this can come only from the, um, the schooling system. The fact is when you talk about uh, is Islam Brotherhood, they're doing a lot of social work in the in the communities, and uh, so there are two ways to radicalize population: is using your social work to radicalize people, and use using religion to ra radicalize people. And this is what we need to fight. But basically, it's not a Jewish fight. This is why we talk to uh, to everyone, including, and I insist on it, including. Uh, is uh, Muslim uh, leadership in, in, in the country. Okay. Um, what can individuals inside and outside of France do to help combat anti-Semitism in France or to prevent anti-Semitism becoming as bad in their own country as it has become in France? Do you have some recommendations? Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's worse. It's much worse in France than anywhere else, uh, especially in Europe and, and, uh, and in the US uh, for a few, uh, past, uh, the past few years. And you know, when I talked to my uh, American counterparts and I was interviewed a few, a few times by the, by the Conference of Presidents, and I said, I'm more worried for you than I'm worried from our for our Jewish population. And recent history has shown that, um, first of all, the development, the increase, the, the, the great increase of anti-Semitic acts uh, in the US is worrisome. And, uh, and, and we are prepared. You know, the first attack against the synagogue was 40 years ago. And for 40 years, we have security systems, we have security organizations, we're, we're training people, we're explaining people what to do in terms, in, in, in case of attack. And what we see in America is people who are not that prepared. Um, we're combating, we're combating anti-Semitism all the time. Um, in the long run, and again, because we've been in this country 2000 years and how many times have we combated anti-Semitism, including the exclusion of France, including, the Dreyfus affair, yeah. uh, including the, uh, the Vichy government and the Shoah. This country is resilient. And uh, we know we need to combat, but we know at the end of the day uh, that the, the, the country is, uh, is resilient in terms of anti-Semitism. And, and, but we need to do our part of the work. What is important for the Jewish population all over the world? And this is what we see in Ukraine today. We need to be uh, showing solidarity worldwide. It's very important that when a Jew suffers, uh, the whole community, the worldwide Jewish community shows its uh, compassion, shows its uh, solidarity in terms of money, in terms of action, in terms of political action also. Um, for example, when I when I look at you, what you can do in your in, in your state, in California state, talk to your representatives, tell them that you are worried for the Jews in France or in Ukraine or in somewhere else. They will bring the word to the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, and, and that will 
make some changes. You know, every time the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs in France would go, would go to America, he would not tell me, but, he would, uh, but, but I would get call from the large Jewish organizations saying, we're meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France. What do you want us to tell him? Um, and it's important that they carry the same message that we carry, that they show that they are worried for the reasons we're worried about. There are some, when you mentioned some, some numbers, uh, there are something to be worried about and some also very positive. As I said, the Jewish life in France is very vivid and developing and, uh, and, and we're doing tremendous developments uh, today for the Jewish life. So there is anti-Semitism. As I will, I, I'm recalling a, a meeting I had with Elie Wiesel in New York. And it was the beginning of the uh, years 2000. And I, I mentioned to him that the numbers of anti-Semitic acts were growing, uh, multiplying by six, seven, eight. And I said, what do you think about anti-Semitism in France? And you know, Elie Wiesel knew France very well. Yeah. And he said, but are the French Jews worried? And I had to think for a moment because we were thinking only in terms of numbers. And I said, yeah, they're worried. There is a feeling of insecurity. And this is the, and he said, Eli Wiesel said, this is bad. When Jews have a feeling of insecurity, it means something is wrong in the society we live in. And, and we don't need to fix the Jews and we don't need to fix the, the, the situation for the Jews. We need to fix anti-Semitism. This is why we work with the government and with the civil society and with the administration to fight anti-Semitism. That's a very strong call to action, which we appreciate. And as we wrap up this podcast, is there anything else uh, that you would like to say? You know, last thoughts. Is there anything that you think we really should have talked about? No, I think we've <laughs> talked about a lot of things. The one thing, don't forget, we have a long experience in, in France about fighting anti-Semitism and fighting for the society we live in. And we'll be always very happy to bring our experience, share our experience, our best demonstrated practice uh, with your population, which is new in this, uh, in this fight. But uh, I'm Israel Chai and, and we'll all fight together for a better world. Thank you so much. This has been a very important and informative podcast. Thank you for our listeners. I encourage everyone who hasn't yet seen Evelyn's documentary, Never Again is Now. You can see it on Amazon and YouTube. You can get more information about my free nonfiction Holocaust theater project developed for students at thinedgeofthewedge.com. And to everyone, without putting yourself in physical danger. Speak up when you can against anti-Semitism and all hate.